Hey there, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Maddie B. And today we have yet again another special show. And this show is in continuation to the show that we had almost a month ago now over the Texas freeze. So as you guys all may recall on the media, there were nine inches of snow and ice in the Texas area, which is record breaking for Texas folks while experiencing no electricity. So we want to openly discuss the details and some updates that may have came up in regards to this case and what rights that you guys may have. So today we have a very strong panel to discuss a little bit more about what is known as the Texas Freeze case. So I would first and foremost like to welcome attorney Alex Hilliard, attorney at Hilliard Martinez Gonzalez, also known as HMG. Alex has experience in serving areas of personal injury and wrongful death litigation, including the high profile ignition switch litigation against General Motors. Welcome today, Alex. Hi, thank you for having me. Yes, it's a pleasure. I would also like to welcome attorney Ramesh Guthman, who's a managing partner at D. Miller & Associates PLLC. Ramesh has experience in personal injury cases, wrongful death litigation, NFL concussion cases, and yet both of these attorneys also have the experience in the case that we'll be speaking about today, Texas Freeze um, against ERCOT, Electric, Electric Reliability Council of Texas. So welcome, guys. Hey, Marty. Alex, thanks for joining us on, uh, uh, on, on the show. It's really, it's, really, uh, it's really important that we get uh, the opportunity to do things like this. And I just want to say on behalf of my partner and our team, we're really glad to have, have you working with us and your, your team working with us on this. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great to not only work with uh, the whole D. Miller firm, but yourself, Ramesh. Obviously, this is something Texans are still worrying about and frustrated by today. And it's on a magnitude that not a lot of people realize. So it's an important topic. I'm I'm happy to be here, honored to be here. Thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah, and like you said, it's an important topic. I want to thank you guys both for being on this panel today. So before we get started into some of the details that we're going to discuss today, um, I would like for you guys uh, to explain for those viewers that are watching what happened the night of Valentine's Day, that was 214 of 2021, specifically and targeting the Texas area. Uh, I think it was a rough night for a lot of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, Marty, it started on that night, right? And then it kind of proceeded for, for days on end after that. And I think um, on that night, you know, obviously our city and our community experienced um, a snowstorm that we were unfortunately, woefully unprepared for. And quite honestly, you know, the the sad part about it is the people who had to deal with the bottom end of it, are the people who were involved in any of those, that decision making, we didn't have that choice. So, um, you know, it was a it was a storm. Again, Houston's been a battered city from 2017, 2019, and now the storm. But um, this is why we're here. Yeah. We're here to do this. Exactly. And I thank you for kind of highlighting a little bit of what the situation um, was. And as you mentioned, uh, we're talking about days without electricity, some people with rolling electricity and some didn't even have that. So if you guys can explain to us, what are some type of damages that you guys are either seeing and our viewers may have also experienced? Alex, you want to take that? Yeah, yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> So the claims that we are seeing right now are ranging from the most catastrophic and tragic of, of cases where people have been killed, people in the Houston area where they were left without power, left without electricity in sub freezing temperatures and elderly uh, especially were, were left vulnerable. And anything from a wrongful death case to injury cases, have been seen as a result of this. And the uh, the cases which are pouring in by the thousands are the property damage cases. Um, obviously, and and luckily, the, the personal injury wrongful death wasn't on a magnitude of the same level as property damage, the people who experienced uh, uh, busted water pipes in their homes, which is what we're seeing the common uh, occurrence in, in a lot of homes, businesses alike. And 
it is not only by the thousands, but it's by the hundreds of thousands of, of homes and businesses that were affected. Hotels who lost uh, uh, their business for week. two weeks. Two and weeks. so, yeah. Yeah, it's been, that, it's been crazy. I mean, you just not only do you have the death and, and especially with the children dying, which was absolutely tragic, but, you, you know, you have a lot of sickness. You have people that are still sick, you know, without power. You had a lot of people, you know, not pacemakers, but people who rely on energy for their medical needs. I mean, they were stuck. You know, we it just there was a lot of trickle down problems and effects. And I still think that as we continue to go on, we're going to see all sorts of different kinds of damages because this problem was, I mean, it was widespread. Yeah, and I know you guys are mentioning some of the damages, um, you know, we're talking about death, the medical, the elderly, but there's also other damages that I wanna just touch really quickly before we go into a different section, but the long-term, their homes, the flooding, can you guys tell us a little bit about some of those damages that you guys saw and are in demand right now still? So, and, and Ranesh, I, don't, I hope you don't mind if I take this jump one. Jump in. So what I experienced before learning that this was going to be a major litigation, which is going to reshape the entire legal landscape of Texas, was after the freeze occurred, we didn't have power in Corpus Christi, where I'm from and where our law firm is centered. Uh, so, so we were at my parents' house. You know, they were lucky enough to have electricity for the, the two days that, that we didn't. And I get a call saying that there is water that is coming down my driveway and that is coming out of the bottom of the front door. And so I rush over to see uh, what every homeowner, uh, you know, never hopes to see, which is the entire house flooded from from ceiling. I mean, there was wow. three inches of water on the floor. And thank God that we had an insurance policy, but still that doesn't, uh, you know, fix the problem. And, and it basically poses a year, if you're lucky, of being away from your home. Everything in your life is interrupted. And every other Texan, whether it was a business that had that exact same thing happen, where they have apartment uh, complexes, you know, multiple business owners own condominiums and, and they have a dozen of them. And that's, you know, 5,000 different condos, which had the exact same thing happen. And so it's something that, that I experienced. And I remember I called Ramesh the day that it happened and I sent him a video. Um, and we'll go through the things that you can do mm -hmm. to help ensure your insurance claim survives later. But it, it's, it's something where it affected every aspect of life, um, no matter who you are. I mean, well said. And, you know, the other issue, just to piggyback on that, the, the inconvenience of it all, too, is if you talk to the contractors and plumbers, you know, there's a shortage, right? The, the demand is it far out uh, exceeds the supply, right? I mean, we, we're talking about plumbers who don't have parts, who don't have fittings, who don't have pipes, who don't have the necessary tools. And there's a back order on that. I mean, you hear all the crazy stories about people driving to Las Vegas to buy tools, to come back here to fix. But it, it is rampant, it is widespread, and there is, you know, there really is nothing that you can say to someone whose life is interrupted like that. I mean, what's the value of coming, being able to come to your home and sit on your, your couch in your living room, right? I mean, right. And, and just to piggyback off of that, Rumesh, which I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of in this <laughs> show, which is, which is one of the things that I love about you, but uh, it, it is something that you can't put a price tag on because loss of time, uh, while it, it can be calculated in some ways, in a lot of ways, you know, loss of time with a loved one is incalculable. You can't ever put a number on what that, uh, whatever it was you missed, which is, you know, an intangible, but that we all know about spending time with loved ones or just the- Thank you the, your own home too, it, don't forget. You exactly. Know, I mean, there's a value of that as well. So exactly. and I want to shed some light a little bit on what you guys are kind of mentioning. Um, now, this is Texas, a huge state. Um, and I just want you guys to kind of cover some ground. Was it every major city? Houston has millions of people, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, Corpus Christi. Um, just to shed some light on the magnitude on why the supply and demand is present. 
Did it affect from the top to the bottom, the east to the west? Can you guys shed some light on area demographically? I, Maria, I think the simplest answer to that question is the sheer volume of the number of potential plaintiffs. That is what's causing the, the issue. I mean, even if you look just locally, right? I mean, we knew San Antonio had issues. We knew Corpus had issues. We knew Dallas had issues. We knew Fort Worth, you know, all of those. But if you concentrate even just in the greater Houston area, what did they say? 1.2 million people were affected? And Crazy. that's here. Yeah. That's here. You know, and, and our job as, you know, being from this area and, and east part east, of, south and east of Texas, we we need to focus on the the businesses and the communities that are here. Right. Because these are the people that need our help. And, you know, look, we are we're going to be able to help anybody in this state yeah. because we know what we're doing. We know how to handle these claims. We're going to give you information on how to you know work your claim and what you should do. But. Look, our focus right now is on the individuals. If you were in Texas, there's most likely you were affected. So, look, we just want to let everybody know that we're the ones that you want to come to when it comes to any issues or claims with this problem. Right. And and, and as law firms like D. Miller and HMG are, you know, we cover the scope of Texas, whether you're in El Paso, whether you're in Amarillo, uh, down south in, in the Valley of Texas, uh, uh, we're you know, a lot of my family grew up or, or Houston doesn't matter because uh, when you have law firms like D. Miller and, and law firms like mine, which and we're working on these cases together because it's going to be a big, big uh, scope of, of cases. And, and while to us. And, and that's another thing is that, you know, it didn't just affect, um, you know, of course, I have I have my my situation that happened to me. But, yeah, it also affected. Uh, a lot of people who work for my law firm. I know that at y'all's law firm, you have multiple individuals, multiple employees that basically had their lives tossed upside down, and and that's the scope of people that we're helping. Everybody from from you know the common everyday individual to you know doesn't matter if you're the biggest business owner that's figuring out how do I get recovery on my business interruption as a result of what happened. Yeah. Um, and you guys, um, those that are watching are in good hands. And I just kind of want to address this. We have a comment. This is from Karen saying, hi, Alex. This is Karen, Karen Bertie. I refer to death case as a result of the freeze to Alexis at your firm. I know the family personally and know that they will be in good hands with your firm. So this is a good example. We have some represented by your, you guys attesting that they are in good hands. And I love that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. They are in good hands with you guys. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for the comment, Karen. And it, it, it is truly appreciated. And in those types of cases, those are the ones that, that, you know, they, they strike the heart deep down, you know, I'm at a loss for words in regard to, you know, some of the pain that must be felt, but, it, but also our job is for you to worry about, you know, um, doing what you need to during this tough time and yeah. knowing that you have people who are fighting for you. You don't have to worry about uh, taking on an insurance company, worrying about how am I going to get justice for this? Because now you have someone standing on your side in front of you to handle that entire, entire process. And you can uh, grieve with your family. I know at the end of the case, it will feel like we are family. Because mm -hmm. that's how, you know, the legal process works in terms of our law firm. I know that's how it works at D. Miller. They treat their clients the exact same way. Yeah, exactly. And I know one of the things that you mentioned, Attorney Hilliard, is finding justice. Now, we before we get deeper into this conversation, are you guys able to tell us, the viewers, who is at fault? Or is there multiple parties that are at fault for this? Alex? <laughs> yes, yeah, I, yeah, so... No, we can. Uh, whenever you have, uh, you know, so let's start at the top, right? There is nobody to blame for the fact that a winter freeze happened, right? Uh, I mean, cut, come on. But but at the deepest level, what do we all have faith in? We have faith in the people that put together the electrical grid, the people who get the information that says, "Hey, uh, uh, we are either prepared or not prepared for a certain event." And we have faith and, and hope that they will act on the right information and take care of us. In the event that they don't, 
which and hey, there are lawsuits that have been filed against, for instance, ERCOT, multiple energy companies alleging that they did not act on the proper information to make sure uh, uh, their customers were prepared and, and didn't experience $17,000 electricity bills, five-day power outages. I know. And, and then at the root of it all, though, you have to have faith in the fact that an insurance company will treat their insured um, according to the contract and according to an insurance company's duty, which is to honor the claims and pay out on the claims for every single person that suffered a loss. And unfortunately, what we see in, in many cases is insurance companies not adequately compensating on claims that are made for businesses and property or completely denying claims. And if you are one of those businesses or one of those individuals that is suffering through that struggle, that is exactly what we are specializing in here, what we're talking about, because it's not easy. And, you, you know, you may have a 120 page contract, right? I mean, these contracts are big, um, but that's that's our job. Yeah. And you want your you like you said, like like you said, Alex, you know, when you. you as an individual, when you purchase an insurance policy, right, you want to feel protected, right? You don't want to have this sense that they're going to be looking for every reason to get out of get out of uh, you know their obligation. Because when you have an insurance policy like a homeowner's or something like that, you're really making a covenant, right? I mean, it's their their safety net. If something happens here, I know that I'm covered. This is why I pay X dollars monthly or X dollars yearly. You know, and then the one thing I do want to add about the potential defendants is this. We rely on our officials and the people who are put in charge to make decisions that are based on a communal good and that are good for the, you know, the public. We do not expect them to make decisions that are financially motivated, even though we understand how the world works. But in situations like this, they have a duty. They have a larger duty to our community, our society, our county, our people. And we expect them to make decisions that are in tone and in benefit of that. And that's what we hope. And then unfortunately, sometimes that doesn't always happen. And, and, and Ramesh, you know, that duty that, I need to emphasize that duty because just like when you hire a lawyer, you know that your lawyer has a duty to you, right? I mean, they have what's called a fiduciary duty, which means they have to take your best interests and act in only those best interests at all times. Um, and there's a lot of ethical rules that lawyers have to follow to follow that fiduciary duty. Well, when you think about an insurance company and you think about their duty, it's actually the same duty. They have a duty to 100% act in your best interest at all times in explaining what coverage you have, what coverage you don't have, the claims process. And people expect insurance companies maybe at certain points to, to give them a hard time. And, and would you expect the same from your lawyer? Of course not. You would fire your lawyer. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you are left relying upon your insurance company to play, uh, pay on a claim. And that's when sometimes you need a law firm like uh, HMG, like B. Miller, to take on these insurance companies to make sure that they honor what they promised to do. Because like Ramesh said, they made a promise. Yeah. And look, you know, they have you have years of relationships with these insurance companies and something you expect better from them. Right. And what you don't want them to do is, like I said, is be trying to shirk that duty because look, it's something that we take seriously. It's, it's a responsibility that we have to, that we have to own. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is great information. Um, and I just want to briefly ask for those viewers that are watching, I want you guys to briefly explain what ERCOT did and their involvement and how does this play in our electrical company? I know some people may watch, be watching right now and have no idea the, hierarchy, umbrella, all of that, that really played. Um, so if you guys could briefly explain that to our viewers. Well, ERCOT, uh, the interesting thing about ERCOT is um, what people don't, what people have to realize, one, is that they are um, a private nonprofit corpor corporation that are in place in Texas to uh, handle this, you know, the this area. Uh, and 
the issue with with them is it's not you know the hard part about this is ERCOT is acts like a registered agent on behalf of a number of different other energy providers. So where ERCOT and all of this kind of content is still being played out. And actually, Alex, I'm going to go ahead and just mention this now. You know, I know a lot of people have read about ERCOT being immune to, to suits and stuff like that. I know that that decision on their immunity is supposed to be uh, come out in June of this year. That is pending from a 2018 case from, I think, one of their providers actually sued them, right, for something like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. the energy companies themselves in, in a lot of instances are going after ERCOT because they know that when they have to dish out $18,000, $20,000 bills to individuals that had no idea that they were going to pay $20,000 within the span of one week for electricity just by having lights on or, or the, or, you know, any electricity they had on, those in, uh, uh, energy companies, they know that they're never going to be able to collect on that from the average everyday Texan who, uh, number one, shouldn't have to pay for that. Um, but then who's left holding the bag is a situation. And ERCOT may have a legal immunity in this case. Uh, uh, but they may not. There's a lot of lawsuits that have been filed against ERCOT saying, you know, they, their conduct in this case does not allow them to have legal immunity. But the entire structure set up as uh, ERCOT basically like a stock price. Mm -hmm. They provide energy and electricity to the uh, energy companies in every single city and town in Texas based upon supply and demand. And the price goes up. And the energy companies pay a higher price as, as demand goes up, and so does the consumer. And ERCOT is never the one who is dealing with the, the hassle of the payment. So a lot of litigation is, is happening, and the landscape is going to change. Yeah, it's going to be You guys are mentioning something important that I want you guys to explain in layman's terms for our viewers. What is legal immunity? What exactly does this mean for those that are watching that we may need to be looking out for? If you guys can explain a little further. So legal immunity, uh, there's different forms of it first and foremost. But like in this case, when you hear the term sovereign immunity, sometimes the, the way our system is set up is we provide immunity for certain institutions because of their benefit to the public good, right? Just like... Um, with schools and ambulances and, you know, certain things like police cars, you know, it, these are stretched analogies, but you're getting my drift, right? And the purpose is, look, we don't want to prevent a, an ambulance from getting to a sick, dying person as fast as it can because he stopped because he didn't stop at a stop sign and got a ticket. You know, that is the policy kind of behind it, right? You don't want to give a ticket to the ambulance for speeding because they're trying to get to the hospital. There's, you know, there's a public policy benefit. So certain institutions are granted this immunity. Now, where it applies here is a little bit tricky because it's still, it's still, um, hasn't been decided yet. Okay. Got it. Right. Okay. The interesting thing about this is that, look, we are untangling that web, right? Because what is ERCOT? Who's behind them? Who's making these decisions? Where are all, like, those are the things that we're taking care of. Alex is taking care of. And that is how, you know, we're going to be able to help our clients the best because we'll know once we have done that. And once we know exactly, um, you know, once things kind of play out, we'll know exactly which way we want to go. Right. And, and ERCOT is the type of company where, like Ramesh just said, there's a criminal investigation into ERCOT, into the reason why this happened, what information was known and, and who was it known by. And the immunities uh, metaphor is kind of difficult to provide, right? Because it can apply in so many different ways to so many different companies. I mean, ERCOT, when people hear it or think of it, they kind of think to themselves, I, I mean, you keep saying this name, ERCOT, but but who is you? I, I don't know an ERCOT. I don't see an ERCOT. Exactly. I don't see them on my. I don't see them on my energy bill, and and that is because they are literally, um, you know, like saying I got to go back to the stock price metaphor. Who sets the stock price? Where is this magic stock price decider? Um, and who am I buying stock from? I know that I see my my stock trader when I buy a certain stock, but who who does he get it from? 
And, and that, I mean, that is ERCOT at the center of all this. And, you know, in regard to relevance to everybody who's watching, everybody who's listening, the wrongdoing that may or may not have happened at the very top, you know, we want to make sure that you're taken care of. And regardless of what ERCOT did, it's still your insurance company's job to make sure that, that if you had damage to your home property, personal injury, wrongful death, anything that happened, it's still their job to take care of you. And, and we're here to fight anybody who has done something wrong that caused you harm, whether it be ERCOT, whether it be your insurance company. Um, and, and right now, like Ramesh said, the cards are still unfolding on the wrongful conduct. They probably will be for a while. Um, but that's, I guess, the best description that, that we can give right now. And no worries, we will ask you guys to come on for another show whenever more starts unfolding. Because uh, I know our viewers, um, you know, really want to educate themselves. And I want to thank you guys, because you guys are educating our viewers on your your world, right? What's happening over there? Um, so now some people that are watching have already filed a claim, like um, one of the comments that we received. And some are still seeking to file a claim due to some of their experiences that they've had um, in getting repairs or even, you know, maybe psychological damage. Is it too late, um, attorneys, to still file a claim, even though we're a month late, two months later, actually, excuse me, two months later? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just second that. Absolutely not in no way, shape, and form. Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, if, if you're listening to this or, or watching this and, and you have a claim or you feel you have a claim, uh, number one, if you're not sure, go ahead and give us a call and we can help you uh, say yes or no to that, help you with the process. But number two, it's important that if you know you have a claim to file it as soon as possible. That's step one. And obviously there's other steps. I know Ramesh, you were going to go over yeah, some of those. Say, along with the insurance claim, like Alex, just to get on top of that, with our people who we're talking to have filed claims, remember you have a responsibility under your insurance policy to mitigate your damages. I cannot stress how important this is. Okay. If you're filing a claim and you have property damages, you have a responsibility to not make the damages worse or not sit there and let it get worse. You have to proactively make your situation better. Do you have to go rewire your house and fix that? No, but you understand, you know, you, um, you have to do the things that would be required of you. Okay. And a lot of times what I want to advise clients out there is don't let that be the reason you don't do your part then it's not bad faith on the insurance they're denying it because you breached the contract yeah, and, and if you guys are watching i'm sorry attorney alex but if you guys are watching i know in the comment section you guys still can go fill out that questionnaire so that we can help you um just like the attorney said it's not too late so we went ahead and loaded that up in the comment section as soon as they said absolutely not so go ahead attorney hilliard excuse me for interrupting no, no, you're fine. You're fine. This is a, uh, I love the group, the group conversation of this. And, and I was just going to uh, say on top of what Ramesh already stated, a few helpful tips in regard to, you realize you have a claim, there's, there's damage to your business or your home. Just a few easy to do steps is pull out your phone. If you have a, a, a camera, a video on your phone, try to document each and every inch that you can be overly thorough with what you take pictures of yourself. It is so, so helpful to have that immediate proof of what happened. So a week later, you don't have to come back and say, well, that you know, it was actually leaking out of the corner of, of this room. Um, and it's, it's hard to see that in that moment. But if you have a picture of it leaking or video of it leaking, that is step one that I would say is the most important thing that in the moment, because there's been hundreds of thousands of insurance claims filed, it may take a while for the insurance company to send an inspector to you. Um, and number two, like Ramesh said, there are certain steps that you need to take yourself that are laid out in your insurance contract. Most people don't know that they have to do anything. Uh, it's not common knowledge to think, wait, my home was damaged. My business was damaged. I have to do certain things or else I'm not covered. Um, one of the main things, for instance, if you had a water pipe burst in your home, in your business, um, they call it a mitigation contractor. 
someone that you can call, which basically helps everything dry. They will open up the ceilings, open up the floors, open up the walls, and, and to let everything air out and slowly start to dry. Um, that is, even if you can have proof of the fact that you called and tried to set up the appointment, because let's say mitigation contractors are booked for a month and you're going, what do I do now? Just the fact of, of the proof that you called and you attempted to set up those appointments, you are fulfilling your obligations under that contract. And you don't have to worry about not being covered for that reason. Now, I do want to ask a question that's very important. It may be very simple or difficult for you guys to answer. Now, for those that have filed a claim um, and those of them that have filled out the questionnaire, I know we want results like that, right? Um, but the legal world is a little bit different. So I know you guys are mentioning some of the good proactive measures to take on having some pictures, videos, which is great. But what is the process look like for those that have filed a claim? How long will this take? Do we need to tell those to be patient? What does this really look like in y'all's world? Ramesh, I was going to say, let, let me just start by saying this. Yeah. The, the legal landscape is tough. And even when, let's say you've just filed an insurance claim, it's tough. Um, given the magnitude of this, these insurance claims are being filed at a higher rate than after Hurricane Harvey happened. It is a scale like no insurance company has ever experienced. And obviously that means that it may be a little bit longer, but now let me speak to the two law firms uh, of D. Miller and HMG. We don't take a long time. In fact, we pride ourselves on being aggressive attorneys that only uh, handle cases. And again, without ex extraneous exceptional circumstances, we try to have every case tried or settled within 12 months because we don't want you to be over a year later still having to deal with the fact that either you haven't been compensated, you haven't been able to have closure on the harm and the loss that you suffered. Um, so although our law firms will do our best to make sure your claim moves quick, um, it, it's something that, that this is going to be going on for a while in terms of the litigation. Uh, but there's no, there's no better law firm and no better lawyer than Ramesh and his, his partners I um, his on, on getting cases moved quickly for the best, best result. Well, thank you for that, Alex. I yeah. appreciate that. And we, we really, you know, enjoy working with you guys. We've learned so much. Um, one of the things I'll tell you again, Mari, you said, you mentioned be patient. Yes. We just, unfortunately the, the wheels of justice, they move slowly. Okay. But what you want to do is be with law firms that move efficiently, okay, and effectively. And that's something that we can, you know, say with confidence that we'll be able to do. And as of right now, can we give you a definitive answer of how long it'll take? No. I mean, you're not watching the show to hear us guess, right? So we're telling you, be patient and do your part, and we'll take care of it. But yeah. to add one more thing on top of what Ramesh said. You will never be thinking, what are my lawyers doing with my case? I haven't been updated. Uh, uh, and you'll never have that feeling of, I wonder what's going on with uh, everything involved in my case. You know, while we may not be able to control, uh, which we will to the best of our ability, getting your case moved fast uh, uh, and resolved quick, we will always keep you apprised of what's happening. Yeah, uh, you know, you are our client. And so we will keep you informed throughout the entire process, which you can take comfort, at least in the fact that you know where it stands, you know, where your claim stands. Yeah, yeah one so thing about our two firms is like, we understand that you have a lot of choice in this world. And we are very grateful and honored when people select our firms. And we, you know, we, we return that by doing the job that we do. Sorry, Marty. No worries. So if you guys have filed a claim, anyone that's watching, what I'd strongly suggest is activate all your communication, your texts, your emails, everything, because um, there may be a, a form that you guys are communicating. Me personally, I don't check my personal email. I don't. But you guys may be reaching out on the personal email. So I think that's um, awesome that you guys stated that you communicate effectively um, in any single way that you guys can. Um, now, we do understand that this case is still active. It's pretty fresh. 
Um, and you guys may not be able to disclose some of the things. However, I do wanna get a little bit in the legal side for those that are watching and may have um, a couple of questions. So Attorney Ramesh Raguthaman, can you explain to our viewers exactly what the word negligence means? And we're gonna to get to something, but what does that word mean for those that are watching? Well, uh, good question. There's, uh, there's two different definitions that I wanna kind of highlight. One is the regular definition of negligence, which is failure to take proper care while doing something. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in the legal definition, right? And that is the failure to exercise care towards others in which a reasonably prudent person would do in the same or similar circumstances, right? And the key difference here is towards others because that allows us to check the actions of the potential defendant. Otherwise, if you use the regular definition, you could sue your chef for overcooking your steak or the dry cleaner for shrinking your shirt. But what makes the legal definition applicable is the, you know, the, 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 the focus on that duty and those actions and your care towards others versus nice. what a reasonably prudent person would do. Okay, so thank you for that. Now, Attorney Alex Hilliard, I want you to, with that definition, where was there negligence in this particularly particular case and how do you dissect that definition and what happened here so like, like i said earlier with the fact that the winter freeze happened you know these catastrophic weather events they have been known to happen throughout american history the fact that we can't prevent them is not negligence but the fact that we can prepare for them and that we have so much information data technology right now to keep us informed and prepared not to experience as a, uh, an entire state what we all had to go through in, er, in early February and, and are still going through right now. Um, what, were there things done wrong? Absolutely, without a question, there is multiple, multiple things that, that could have been done better. But right now, like we said earlier, as the cards are still being played out, on whose fault it was from the very top, uh, uh, it's really time for insurance companies to step up and uh, really honor that promise that they made to their insured, which is we will cover you for any catastrophic damage because that's why you buy an insurance policy because you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if it's gonna be a freeze, you don't know if it's gonna be a hurricane. And you know the ultimate negligence, which, you know, we are going to battle hard for each and every client, whether it be a business, a homeowner, is to make sure that insurance companies, number one, don't commit it. And number two, if they do, that, you know, you get compensation for a bad faith insurance denial. And that's my reminder that you always put your phone on vibrate. <laughs> Hey, you, you are a busy man, and I know y'all's phones are always ringing because you guys, like you said earlier, the communication is immaculate. So we forgive you definitely on that. Now, I love that you guys gave two different perspectives, one the definition and how this uh, kind of relates to this particular clay, case. Now, um, how does the legal approach change or even stay the same when we're involving some of these damages, like whether it's home damages or even... Um, catastrophic, like a death of a person. So you, you want to take this one, Matt? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So when you have a wrongful death personal injury case, you have obviously different types of damages. It, it's a different tragedy that you experience rather than having someone, uh, a business who has lost, uh, you know, your ability to be open for a certain amount of time. Um, the the damages that you suffer from losing a mother, from from losing uh, your children, if you are parents, a husband, a wife, those are damages on a completely different scale, and they are measured by law differently. And so I would say it's it's uh, they couldn't be more different, but but we specialize in both, and, and so the wrongful death damages, you know, available to the the surviving spouse the you know the parents of of children if that tragedy does occur are uh, um, I mean I could list all the types of damages right now but it's it's Texas allows for almost every type of damages by law up to and including punishment damages which is what they call punitive damages when the conduct 
is wrongful enough, um, you know, it allows a jury to say, we're going to send a message with this number that we're going to write down so that other companies see this verdict and say, uh, we need to, you know, reform our own safety policies, how we do business. Yeah, use it as a deterrent, I think, is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what they, they try to do. And I love that you guys are allowing us in your worlds because, you know, a lot of, including myself, don't know some of these details that, you know, are common to you guys, the attorneys. Um, so I want to thank you guys for allowing us in your world. Now, Ramesh, allowing us in your world, if you can explain the difference between an individual case and a class action case, and if they're different. They, yeah, they are different. Uh, a class action case is, is very simple. It is quite simply a group of individuals or prospective plaintiffs who all have the same or similar injury against a common defendant, right? So you have all people with, you know, a certain defective airbag in their car or all people who bought a defective product or all people who have the same injury from using something, okay? That's a class action. On the individual side, we take each case individually and all of those damages are centered from, you know, come from the plaintiff. All of the recovery goes to the plaintiff. Got it. Okay. And, so, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Just to, just to build on what Ramesh said in a, in a class action, the damages are, are split evenly in lots of cases. If there's a class action settlement, if you're a group of, of plaintiffs who have a defective vehicle who suffered, uh, uh certain types of losses that are similar, but in individual cases, like Ramesh said, I, I just want to stress that, the, you know, everything that we do is for you. You know, you are the center of our focus attention and everything that we recover is for you. That's nicely said. Now I, I asked that question and particularly in this case, because um, we have seen in the media, I have articles and, you know, a lot of media um, proposes on the articles that this is a class action. So in this case, particularly, is it, individual base or is there a class action or what do you guys focus on on which one there's both actually so there's a class action on the against the certain companies for the charging i'm not fully versed in it right for the rates uh, yeah that, i believe so yeah and there's a class action that centers on that aspect of it but we're our focus is more on the individual cases that resulted from this Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that because I know sometimes people may um, read certain things and I love that you guys really uh, distinguish the two. Now, for both of you guys, attorneys, um, you guys have combined experience a lot, right? Have you guys seen a case like this before with the damages or the type of case? R Ramesh says yes. I say unfortunately, unfortunately yes. I mean, you have a group of defendant bad actors acting in their own interest and putting the their the community second. Yeah, we've seen it before. <laughs> and, and so uh, I guess my answer was a little bit nuanced, uh, more nuanced to that question because, like Ramesh said, have we seen this case where you have wrongful conduct where somebody knew information that could have prevented a lot of harm that resulted? Absolutely. That's what we do as lawyers as we handle cases with that scenario every single day. But in regard to this specific winter freeze, have we ever seen anything like it about, uh, uh, you know, multiple millions of insurance claims getting filed this fast? Never. Has there ever been this many uh, homes and businesses damaged in this amount of time uh, by a freeze? Never. Um, and so there are many firsts in this case, but the conduct of um, why you hire a lawyer to represent you, it's the same, which is uh, insurance companies, for one, they have their duty. But the reason why it, it happened at the very top, again, information that was known that could have been acted upon. But at the very end of the day, sometimes you see the bottom line affecting decisions more than they should um, when caring about the benefit and well-being of Texans, which you know is why something plaintiff lawyers, a lot of plaintiff lawyers, including me and Ramesh, uh, we got our law license to uh, fix that issue in society. Absolutely. I mean, we want to help the to help the individual. I mean, that is the the entire purpose. Um, 
you know, and Alex, you gave a really good answer on, you know, is there a number first? I kind of, I think I took the question a little bit topically, you know, just more bad actors. And is it our job to come in and take, you know, help people and make sure they're protected? Because that's something we take really seriously. Um, but you're right. There is a lot of first in this case. I mean, look, we don't even know. We're going to find out if one of the potential defendants is immune or not here in a few months. So, but yeah. you know, that, that's just on that end. But one thing I will tell you that will survive and will be there are your insurance claims. So let's let's hope and you know let let us say this too. We hope everything works out for everyone. OK, but we just want you know the purpose of what we're doing, what Alex is doing, all of us, our firms are doing is that if it doesn't. Okay. If your insurance company does it, we, we want you to say this, that we hope that they do. Okay. We really do. But if they don't, we want you to reach out to us. Yeah. And as, yeah as everybody here has probably figured out by now, insurance company pushback is something that every single person watching who has had any experience with uh, getting in a fender bender uh, uh, up to the, the this most severe type of damage, the pushback is something that you know and anticipate is likely going to be a part of that process, dealing with an insurance company, especially during disasters. Um, but the thing is, don't let insurance companies walk all over your policy. Don't let them push you around if you feel like they are. Um, you got to know your rights and having law firms standing on your side, standing in front of you to deal with that insurance company is, is important. Um, because unfortunately, as we see, it can be unfair in the way consumers, the insured, you, your business are treated. Um, and so that's why, that's why we're here for you. Yeah, I love that. That question um, brought two different answers, but it was two different perspectives. So I think that's awesome that, um, you know, our viewers are able to see the perspectives on a more big picture versus more granular in this case. Now, one of the last few questions that I have for you guys, do you guys, um, the attorneys, different law firms, do you feel confident that there will be a resolution for those that have suffered in this type of case? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I know that we'll be able to, and I'll, uh, Alex, I'm just going to speak for you, for your team. I know that you guys are doing Please a great do. job for your clients and make sure that they get the recovery that they need, as well as the ones that we do on the claims that we're working together and on the ones that we have individually. I, I stand by our firm and our firm's work, and um, I'm really grateful and proud to be working with um their their outfit over there and hmg and we've learned a lot and um i think the sky's the limit agreed agreed you know one of the things that uh, that i hear most is is you know, ramesh is very in tune with his entire law firm all of his employees and i, I try to be the same at, at our law firm and getting feedback and one of the things about working with with uh your firm ramesh is uh it's it's a shared feeling of, of, I think that we have the same values, the same motivation to act on behalf of our clients to get them the, you know, that the, the client comes first in all scenarios. And, it, you know, unfortunately, it's something you don't see uh, every time in, in lawyers or law firms. Yeah. Um, but, but it's great to see, you know, a law firm who cares as much about the client uh, as we feel we do in working with your firm. So it's the feelings mutual. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And I love that because it kind of gives a, that family feel, right? That um, you automatically develop with clients on telling some of, you know, their intimate stories and situations that they experience. Now, um, attorneys, we've come to the end of the show. And I always ask any of our panel members who have joined the show, if you had to leave our viewers with one last either um, comment or quote, what would you advise our clients that are watching right now that has been, you know, diving deep into your world and has a little bit more education on this case, the Texas freeze? Alex? Yeah, um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of heartache, a lot of not only property damage, but to the most extreme scale of, of damage that has happened because of this winter freeze. Uh, know that uh, at, even when times are are at their hardest or at their worst, um, you know you're always able to look back and you know with faith and and the right people by you, um, 
you know, hopefully you will get through those times and we're here to help you through those times. I know it's not easy. I know a lot of people who are suffering right now with either property damage uh, or the loss of a loved one. There sometimes doesn't seem like there's ever going to be a road forward. Um, but I promise you that that having a team of people who can feel that pain with you and help you through it is is one of the most important things because um, we will help you through it. And so that's what I would leave everybody with, just uh, knowing that if you need us, we are there. Absolutely. And, not, you know, I would kind of just echo the, the same kind of thing. Just understand that it is a process. Understand that we know that it's difficult and we understand that there is disruption and aggravation and frustration that you're dealing with on a daily basis. And we're aware of that. And we're here for you. Our lines of communication are open for you. And uh, if times are tough, give us a call. We're, we're always available and we'll always be able to, uh, sorry about that, uh, always be able to help you out in any situation that you're in. Awesome. Awesome. Again, another busy man. You guys are showing us right now uh, those, those busyness. And I want to thank you guys, um, first and foremost, for being on the show, Attorney Alex Hilliard and Attorney Ramesh Raguthaman. I want to thank you for being on the show and just allowing us in your world, uh, allowing us to know more information on what's happening, because sometimes someone like myself and our viewers just feel lost. What's the update? What's going on? You see what's on the news and you want to believe that, but you don't know. So I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us in your world um, and on being on the show. Absolutely. That's you. why we're here. Thank you. All right. Hey, Thanks. Alex, thank you for joining us again. We really appreciate you taking the time. And like I said, on behalf of all of us here at DMA, Really, really appreciate everything you guys do for us. I, I really appreciate being on the show. It, it was a great experience. Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, be back on the show one day. Who knows to talk about this or another topic? But I loved it. Thank you. Guys. It's already on the calendar. <laughs> 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 awesome. So, if you guys want more information, we did load it up in the comment section. If you or a loved one has suffered from this Texas freeze. We'd like for you to go on this website, file your claim, and we will have someone give you a call. Um, we must hold these companies, insurance providers, those that are unfolding accountable for the pain and suffering that was caused by this storm that could have been prevented. I want to thank you guys all for tuning into the show. And most importantly, I want to thank you guys for sharing it. The more that you guys share, the more we can educate other Texans out there as well that have gone through this. So thank you for tuning in to Talk To Me Tuesday on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Mari B. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.